Let's do all the games on Friday night. And let's do monster line of the night first. It is our friend Kyle Lowry. Went off, triple double, 20 points, four threes, 11 rebound, 10 assists, a steal, and a block. Great efficiency everywhere. There are rumors saying that hey, Kyle Lowry might get traded. I, I think he's going to lose some value, but not by that much. On the season, let's see where he's right. You know, he's, he's top 40 guy, and he, he gets traded, he'll be top 50 guy, top 45. He might lose a bit points, a bit three. I think he would still be, a, if he ends up on the Sixers, Ben Simmons might take a hit, I think. Maybe, you know, let Kyle Lowry run the show a little bit more. He could still give you over six assists a game on the Sixers. And the steals, you know, the defensive stats and the rebound, maybe he'll lose out a little bit of rebound. Uh, but he still, because guards like him, you know, really great free throw, can hit threes, can give you a lot of assists and get assists, the ranking's gonna be high, it's gonna be top 50. Uh, even if he averaged 15 points, it's fine, right? And he, his efficiency has been really good this season, 46%, 46.6% from the field. If he can do that, if he goes to Sixers, maybe the efficiency can stick, then he'll be a top 50 guy. I wouldn't worry too much if, I, if I'm a Lowry owner. Maybe the minutes not gonna be as high, but I think I still think he'd be he's, he's gonna be fine. Guys like this, been doing it for so many years, goes to a different team should be fine. If I have to bet my money on. And the uh, dot of the night is yeah, Buddy Hill. Just bad. He's just been bad this season. You don't drop him really because I'll just talk about his stat line first. Fourteen points, three threes, and nothing else, and bad. Bad from the free throw line and from the field. He's ranked. He's ranked 116th on the season, averaging 15.5, and most importantly, shooting 37% from the field. At some point this season, he's gonna turn it around. You don't drop it because he's giving you 3.6. Unlike like a Tim Hardaway Jr. or I mean, Team Hardaway Jr. The minutes is actually inconsistent, but like a Bogdanovich who get 30 minutes pretty consistently. Or like a, even like an Evan Fournier, all those guys being just points and threes guys on the waiver wire, he hits more threes than all of them. As bad as, as he's been shooting the ball, he's still making 3.6 threes. So you don't, you don't really drop him. And this is probably his floor to be honest. He's got a pretty consistent role on this team playing 35 minutes a night. And he's taking, he's averaging 14 shot attempts. It just, uh, he's only making 37% of them. We, we know he's not, not a big steals guy, not a big blocks guy. The, the, uh, the rebound, four point rebound is fine, three assists. And it just a matter, if he starts shooting just 44%, he'll be a top 90 guy, pretty comfortably in my opinion. Um, so I don't know if you wanna buy low. I mean, how low can you go, right? He's already ranked outside of 120. And the upside is probably not top ninety guy, but if he gets if he gets dropped, you you, you gotta grab him. Use your wire. The the threes he give you is really great. Um, the first game is the Celtics beating the Pacers. Yeah, Celtics they finally they got a, they got a win. Sabonis great seven for twelve and interestingly nine for ten from the free throw line. Filled it up and no defensive stats this game. Miles Turner plays such high minutes. This is what you, you want to see for Miles Turner. He is the guy. You know he just you know just know how to not being foul trouble while blocking three shots a game. One steal and three block, is, if he can average one steal and three block, he'll be a top 20 guy, right? That, that will be his floor probably, if he can average three point, over three blocks a game. Justin Holiday, um, and just to talk about why the, the rankings in category league for Miles Turner is so high, because he's blocking 3.5 shots. Like the the top five guys in the NBA, I mean, maybe Rudy Gobert is also blocking like 2.7, 2.8. But after those two guys, nobody's blocking close to, I don't know, 2.5. I mean, Chris Boucher is averaging two. Guys like that is averaging two. And two of those guys, two plus two is equal to four. And Miles turned along is blocking 3.5 shots. So having him on your team along can probably just win you the category if you just pick up some other guys. Uh, so that's the value of Miles Turner, right? Like other stats like steals, there are many guys in the league can average 1.5 steals, right? A big steals guy, right? like a guy like, I mean, maybe one guy can average two steals, but 
a lot of guys not that far off, like 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. But for blocks, Miles Turner is in his own category. Like 3.5 is, is insane. Justin Holiday went off. That's why you want to roster this guy. He's, he give you very low turnover, good efficiency you know, from, the, from, the, from the field this season for him, for him because the volume is low. And great free throw can give you 2.53 and 1.5 steals. The 2.53 and 1.5 steals is valuable. You, you gotta, that's why you roster him and, and also low, low turnover. He can be a top 80, 90 guy as long as you know, he's getting this high level of minutes. Malcolm Brogdon fell off quite a bit over the past month or so. Mainly because, well, obviously he shot the ball pretty bad this game, but the steal number is zero for the season. Let's see our friend Brogdon. He's still ranked thirty-five. He was ranked top twenty, top fifteen. And for the season, he's still averaging one point two. But I'm, but I'm pretty sure he was averaging one point six, one point seven. Because I'm pretty sure. Over the past month or so, he's averaging maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.9. I'm not exactly sure. This is probably where he should be. And uh, having less than one steal a game probably puts him in the top 40 or 50 range, in my opinion. He can still give you six assists and 20 points. But uh, yeah, the, the steals was never going to stick. TJ McConnell, you still roster him. Still good, good line, 24 minutes. Four assists and a steal and five rebounds. And he, he struggled this game. It was a minus 16 against uh, the Celtics team. Jeremy Lamb is not worth rushing. We, we know why. The, the minutes is all the way down to 18. Only streaming. And Celtics side, you, you want to buy low on Jason Tatum. He's fallen all the way out of uh, top 20, actually. Top 20, 28. The, the guys in, uh, you know, from the 20 to 30 range, the, the, their, their value is, is all kind of close. I would, uh, yeah, I would buy low. I, I don't want to throw Paul George, shit on Paul George again, but this is what Paul George does every single year as well. Go, I own him for many years, I know him. There'll be like two or three weeks, he would just shoot the ball horribly. Like shoot 10, 15%. And when that happens, you go in there, you buy low. Uh, Jason Tatum, yeah, I think Jason Tatum does this, uh, you know, over the years as well, being in a shooting slump. Uh, nine rebound, four assists. I think uh, you want to trade uh, like a two for one, like Norman Powell plus um, some other guy like uh, Robert Williams. You know, people think he's going to be great as the season goes on because Brad Stevens said, hey, we're going to give him one minute. Or plus him and uh, Nolan's Noel try to trade for Jason, uh, Jason Tatum. Who knows? Uh, the owner might take him. T Tatum might continue to struggle for a week or two. We don't know. Um, but yeah, the counting set should be there, but the volume is... Yeah, he was never going to be a top 10 guy on a per game basis. In fantasy, it's just his availability it really helps. Daniel Thais played 30 minutes and Tristan Thompson. And like I said, not like I said, Marcus Smart is still out to all-star break. They've been experimenting different lineups. So hey, you know, grab Daniel Thais, stream Tristan Thompson, see what happens. Jalen Braun, another bad game. Yeah, he had the... Uh, Jalen Brown was never, you know, I just know if you somehow sold high on him, congrats, he was never going to be a top 20 guy. You know, if, and uh, he's scoring, has fallen a bit, and he's still shooting 50%. If that fall off, I, I still view him as a top 40, top 50 guy, but hey, maybe I'm, uh, you know, if the scoring fall off and uh, the free throw and field goal fall off, he could, you know, the ranking will fall very quickly. He might just be a top 60 and top 70 guy if he has another two or three bad games before you know it. Um, but when that happens, you, you buy low on him. But at this point, you hold, right? If you sold high, if, if you bought low, oh, sorry. If you sold high for like, uh, I don't know, a Zach Levine, congrats, because Zach Levine is going to be better. If you, you got like a, a guy like Jeremy Grant, congrats, right? All those guys should be better than Jason, uh, Jalen Brown. Bad efficiency here, but still five for six from the free throw line. No defensive stats and four turnover. Kamba went off again uh, on the Celtics. I think just uh, I don't know. Kamba, he's got a green. I, I think he's gonna be like maybe a top 80, 90 guy with uh, you know best case scenario top sixty, like a Donovan Mitchell that type of. Uh, but I don't think he's he's got a great name value. That's why he's a sell high. Often this team should try to sell high. Thirty-two points looks really good. 
He's gonna give you 18, 19 points, but nothing else. I don't expect him to give you, and, and some threes, of course. He's not a big assist guy as, as a point guard on this team because so many guys are facilitating, right? Marcus Smart is still up. He's not a big steals guy either. Maybe one steal, maybe 1.1. Over the years, he's never been a one steal. Big steals guy, even when he's on Charlotte Hornets. And, you know, he's getting older and older and older, and, older and he's going to miss out back to back. So if I, if I can get a top 40, 50 guy, top 40 guy, right? If, if I can trade Campbell Walker plus Norman Pop for Jason Tatum, you know, who says no? I, I would do that trade. He's got the name value also. Uh, Peyton Pritchard played 30 minutes, didn't do, didn't really do much. Robert Williams is another guy I want to talk about a little bit. We know that the news came out, Brad Stevens said, hey, he's on a li minute restriction. So we're gonna play him in, play him more minutes? I think it's just some bullshit. He, the Celtics, once they get Marcus Smart back, a lot of the times they're gonna go small. Go small meaning play Daniel Thais at the center. I mean, Daniel Thais can't play the center. So Robert Williams is not gonna, he's not gonna, he's, he's not gonna crap top, uh, he's not gonna crack 30 minutes a night. At most, he played 25 minutes, and on most nights, he played under 20 minutes. Because what happens when Marcus Smart comes back is Daniel Thais is gonna, still going to start, and Tristan Thompson is moved back, back to the bench. And that's going to take away Robert Williams' minutes a little bit. And there are like, different matchup issues. So I don't really see him. Like, he, he can occasionally have good games like this. I think this is a good sell high, perfect sell high. There are people thinking, hey, he's, he's just getting started. He's going to play more and more. This is just... This is a sell high, plus him and Norman Powell, plus him and, uh, you know, Nolan Nolan's a while. Guys have short-term value, you know, try to trade for a, for a struggling guy. Uh, that would that work out for, in your favor. The next game is the, the the Houston Rockets losing to Toronto Raptors. P.J. Tucker, wow, I feel bad for this guy. They're still playing him such high minutes, he should get traded. I mean, he, he should go to a contending team. Uh, okay st stat here, but I'm not interested in him. Victor Oladipo and John Wall. Again, bad efficiency and uh, all, low turnover from both of them. And uh, those guys' uh, rankings in category leagues is going to be low because Oladipo is ranked 82nd. John Wall is ranked, uh, you know, 120th because the free throw, 75% of our four t uh, attempts is bad, a lot of turnovers. Right, low field goal. And, uh, you know, John Wayne, De'Aaron Fox is another guy. And Westbrook, those guys, those guards can give you huge volume stats. But they're not great free throw shooters. And they turn the ball over a lot and they're, they're bad on the field. If you collect those guys together, you could have a pretty good team. Basically, just pounding three efficiencies, but, you know, great everywhere else. So, you know, I, I like that idea. You know, just to see if it fits your team, I would just buy low. But guys like John Wall, they're gonna miss out. They're gonna be a headache to them because they're gonna miss a lot of back-to-backs. So if it fits your team, it makes sense. Trade, trade. You know, try to make that trade because the volumes they provide is great. Daniel House, he's another guy I wanna. I think it's worth picking up at this point. He's a mini Justin Holiday, hit threes, get you some defensive stats. Jay Sean Tate, 23 minutes. Had four personal fouls here. With everybody back, he, he still should get 30 minutes, but he had four personal fouls here. That's why he, you know. I'll take a look at it. On the Raptors side, Siakam is out, was out. Uh, hopefully he come back very soon and Chris Boucher started. You know, offensively did not have the best game and played 20 minutes, but the three blocks, you know. Any guy who averaged two blocks, is, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta pick roster them top 50 value right there OG again no steals where's OG's ranking is it the uh, you know I thought you can OG give average two steals a game for the season he's still right 53rd averaging 1.6 steal yeah that that fall, fall off quite a bit as a two steals guy right if you play three games without a steal your steal number is gonna fall off a cliff one point, if he's only going to average 1.5, 1.6, he's probably just a top 50, 60 guy. If he can give you two, that's top 40. The question is, can he be a, t a two steals guy? We don't know. I don't know. He, the steal number has been quite low, but everything else is fine. He mainly give you those defensive stats and efficiency. 
Norman Powell, this is again sell high, sell high, sell high, sell high. If you look at his the other stats, right, it's almost one steal and one block is nice. I understand he can maybe average one steal, but it's it's just a crazy efficiency again, four for eight. And once that fall off, and he's like the fourth, fifth option on this team, I think, uh, the packing order. So I, I wouldn't. I, I mean, if, if everybody thinks he's overperforming, you hold on to him. I just think he's gonna the fall, once the once he start you know playing bad, he's gonna lose minutes. Everything just he's gonna be a droppable guy. Fran Van Lee struggled from the field, three steals. That's, that's good. Good stuff and Kyle Lowry already talked about it. Hey, let's move on to the next game. The Kings beating finally. They lost like oh, I don't know nine straight. Harrison Bombs, forty minutes, great stuff. And I, last time I talked about him is the seven steals and two. two wow, really bad from the free throw line. What? Okay, he's gonna be better than this, and his ranking probably takes a hit because the free throw is so bad. But the I talked about Harrison Bombs assist numbers. He basically doubled or tripled. Over the years, he's like a one point something assist guy. For the, this season, he's averaged three point something, three point five. If he can be at three point five, that's really good. And if he can bring the defensive stats, that's even better. You, you, you got to roster him. I think he can be a top seventy guys, top eighty guy. Marvin Bagley, another great game. I, I don't really trust him that much. Just a great, great game, regardless. Nineteen points, eight rebounds. It's just the efficiency. As a big guy, we know he doesn't give you the steals, blocks, or assists and bad field goal so bad free throw as well Rashawn Holmes went off 19 points 2 rebounds 17 sorry 19 points 2 blocks 17 rebounds and great efficiency everywhere this is why like guys like Rashawn Holmes in category leagues you know it's it, it's deceiving right he's averaging like 13 points and 8 rebounds and 1.5 blocks why is he top 40 because he's efficient everywhere doesn't hurt you anywhere and uh, really, really good field goal guy, Rashawn Holmes. He plays hard. Buddy Hill already talked about him, died of the night. And De'Aaron Fox, you know, the counting set looks really great if you just ignore the efficiencies. But it just sucks as a point guard, he's not giving you those free throws and he's hurting you badly in free throw. And if you're punting, I don't know, two categories, he works fine. Might as well just punt three. Get Westbrook. You got, if you got De'Aaron Fox on your team, and if your team build is you don't have to win free throws every week, just get a Westbrook. You can get Westbrook so cheap in category leagues. You can get him like any maybe a top fifty guy. Like although Westbrook has been playing quite quite nice, playing better and better lately. Maybe you cannot buy low on Westbrook anymore. On the Detroit Pistons side, Sadiq Bay, you, you gotta pick him up. He's been playing so well lately. Great efficiency, hit five threes here. Jeremy Grant. 14 for 15 from the free throw line. Uh, no defensive set. That's why I think Jeremy Grant has room to grow. He's ranked because he added this new thing. He's a 90% free throw now, averaging six attempts. Him and uh, him and Bam at a bio, crazy. One summer, all of a sudden become a close to 90% free throw guy just crazy stuff that's why I mean he's ranked 33rd and he could be I don't know top 15 guy I, I think because he can bring you those defensive stats 0.3 steals is low for him 1.1 if he can get three steals and three block three blocks in the next two games he would just be top 25 top 20 just really scary stuff from Jeremy Grant this season in fantasy even more because the free throw rate he's been hitting Mason Plumbing. In foul trouble here, still fill it up. Like I said, he's gonna lose value, and I would keep my eye on Isaiah Stewart. If Isaiah Stewart can start and play 30 minutes, you know he has he's better. He put up better stat probably. I don't know. Dennis Smith Jr. and Josh Jackson. Those are the two guys. If you don't care about the efficiencies, look at this one for five. If you don't care about the efficiencies, go go grab both. Go grab both. Um, yeah. Dennis Smith Jr. finally, you know, he was starting and playing 18 minutes, 26 minutes. If he can push up to 30, 35, you know, watch out. The efficiency is going to suck, but hey. The next game is the Miami Heat beating the Utah Jazz. Bogdanovich, this is the problem with him. He also has six personal. He played horrible, minus 18, 
17 points, 3 threes, nothing else. He's a streamer. He's been, you know, he's been pretty consistent giving you 15, 16 points, but he's a streamer. He doesn't give you anything else. Like, um, you know, people have biases like, hey, 17 points looks nice, but just 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 2 rebound. And Rui Sonio, you know, like, guys like Rui Sonio, maybe 8 points, doesn't look that good, but hey, 4 rebounds, 6 assists, and a steal, and 2 threes. Uh, low turnover. He's worth rostering if you don't care about the points. If you care about efficiency, you know, some threes and good rebound and assists. And a big difference of stats. Rudy Gobert, 7s for 7, but everything else. 7s seven for 7 from the free throw line, everything else looks alright. And Donovan Mitchell. You know, bad from the field. We know he's bad from the field most nights. But most importantly, 3 steals. If he can average 1.5, he'll be a top 50 guy. Like he was rookie season, he's 66 ranked. Uh, uh, you know, majority of the reasons is the bad 42 percent from the field. I don't know how much he can improve. Maybe 43, but he's taking 20 shots a game, so that really hurts your efficiency, right? I would, uh, you know, just hold on to him, and if he can up his uh, uh, steals to 1.5 and be a little bit more efficient, he can be top 50. But before that happens, he's probably in the top 60, top 70 range. Mike Conley, another great game. Seven assists and two steals. Top 50 guy, 14 points. Just good stuff from Mike Conley this season. In fantasy and in real life as well. With him back, Joe Ingo still played 25 minutes. He's a streamer if you need some assists and threes. And Jordan Clarkson struggled pretty hard this game. That's why his minutes is pretty low. Don't drop him. You know, he, 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 he'll be bounced back. Maybe in a shooting slump. Uh, don't drop him. He still took 17 shots. That's why you know. He'd be better than Bogdanovich because he come off the bench, have unlimited usage because Donovan Mitchell is not there. And just fire away. Right? On most nights, he'll make more. He'll make a 46-47%. Well, they did play the Miami Heat, who's a pretty good defensive team. Jimmy Butler, great. Wow. Did not expect this level of production from Jimmy. Honestly, he had like 27 points and 33 points. He's uh, for the season ranked 17th. Just great stuff. Almost averaging eight points, eight rebound, and eight assists. That's that's a surprise. Eight assists. That's really high. Uh, this is probably his ceiling. If he if he can improve his efficiency a little bit, shooting only 44 percent. If he can be 47, he can be a top 15 guy. Right. Bam, five for five from the free throw line. You know what else? What else is new? Then Bam making free throws, 85% on 5.7 attempts. Like I said, if you can hit 85% on high volume, he'll be a top 15, top 20 guy. And the steals and blocks is very low for him this season. I think last season he was a close to 1.5 steals guy. Maybe the steals are not, never coming back. It's been half a season. We don't know. Everything looks all right. Hey, Kelly Aldidic, I wouldn't even stream here at this point. High minutes every game doesn't do anything. Duncan Robinson for threes, okay. Streaming Kendrick Nam, he's uh, he's still playing thirty minutes. Thirty minutes, you can still stream him until he doesn't get thirty minutes in. And Goran Dragic went off, absolutely went off. I am not a big fan of Goran Dragic in fantasy. He's a bad free throw for a point guard and no steals. Where is his rank this for the season? Goran. Yeah, he's not even ranked top inside of 200. Uh, if you want to take, uh, you know, he sh he shot the ball really well. So if you if you want that, sure, take a take a fire on him. But his ceiling is really capped. Let's go on to the next game. Sounds too, playing too well. They are ranked. Where, where are they? Yeah, they're, they're gonna be the fourth seed. I think they're gonna be top four because there's a pretty big gap between the, the fourth and fifth seed at the moment. Uh, but can they move up to top th three? I don't know. Even though it's really close between them and the Clippers and Lakers. Lakers being on a losing streak, so it's pretty close. Mikael Bridges, again, insane efficiency. This is what he can do. And two steals, that's nice. If he can average 1.3, 1.4 steals, he'll be a top 50 guy. So hopefully that could happen. On the season, where is Mikael Bridges? Let's see, Mikael Bridges. Yeah, he's 47th, 57th, sorry. 14 points, he can do that. I, I I want him to hit a bit more threes, only two threes. Maybe he can be a 2.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 
five rebounds sounds about right. He's not a big assist guy. And point three point seven steals and one block. So if those improve, he'll be he'll he'll you know he'll improve his rankings. Jay Crowder played twenty nine minutes, only took four shots. You can stream him for for some points and threes and some defensive stats. He had five assists this game, so that's that's good. DeAndre Ayton, twenty you know, one of his best games every time anytime he scored over twenty points, that's great. Devin Booker struggled massively from the field. And again, don't don't think don't think he's gonna be good. If you if you can get a top forty guy or fifty guy back, I would do that. Chris Paul, wow. Really, really great stuff from Chris Paul. Fifteen assists. That's why Devin Booker, he's not gonna get any assists. He's you know, he adjusted to the team really well and he started he's starting to take over. He on a per game basis, if he can be healthy, yeah. Yeah, he's already ranked 24th, averaging 16.6 and 8.8 assists. That's really scary. And the the uh, the steals, he wasn't getting any, and it's, he's already at 1.3. So he'll be back in 1.5 really really soon. And a crazy efficiency. Wow, what a year from Chris Paul. He's even better than uh, last year. Cause last year OKC he wasn't averaging 8.8 assists. Just crazy stuff. If he can stay healthy, I don't know. He'll be a top 30 guy. And he was getting drafted fairly late. And nobody on the sounds worth talking about. On the Bulls side, Garrett Temple, 32 minutes, you know, not didn't really do anything. Patrick Williams, same thing. So those two guys you can stream them. Wendell Carter Jr. only had played 24 minutes. He popped off like last game, two steals and two blocks. So you still roster him. Zach Levine, the crazy efficiency continue. Uh, 24 points, but the problem with him and bad from the free throw line. Okay, if he if he has uh, if the two efficiencies fall off, his ranking gonna fall off because he's not a big rebound assist steal blocks guy. It's just a crazy efficiency and as a, as a result, close to 30 points, a lot of threes. So if he struggles, his ranking gonna fall. But I, I expect him to be a top 25 guy. After this game, he's ranked 18 because Jamie Butler. Uh, got ahead of him. He's maybe a top 20, top 25 guy. Kobe White, you know, if you ignore his uh, defensive stats, it looks great. 19 points, 5 rebounds, 4 threes. But just no defensive stat for Kobe White. Then he's out. 21 minutes, still putting up the stat. You don't drop him yet. Because the level of production he gave you in 21 minutes is still great. Still hold on to him, but. Remember when Lauren Markin comes back, how many minutes is he gonna get? But still putting a big stat. You gotta roster him. The next game is the Clippers beating. They got their revenge on the Grizzlies. Kawhi Leonard, great stuff. Eight for thirteen. Eleven for eleven. This is what the robot can do. Crazy efficiency, no steals. But hey, thirty points. He should be a top five guy on a per game basis. Batum shot the ball pretty well. But the minutes is low, so if he can't get 30 minutes, I wouldn't rush to him, stream him. Sergi Baca's minutes are really up and down uh, with Zubak, you know. None of those guys are worth rostering, like rostering them full time. I could, you know, I would stream them for, you know. Paul George, 32 minutes, only took 11 shots. Again, 55% shooting. For the season, where is Paul? Uh, yeah, 15th ranked. Shooting 51% and 89% from the free throw line. I expect those two fall a, a little bit. Uh, he should st still be a top 20 guy. Uh, but hey, maybe for the rest of the season, he, he can only give you top 25 or 30 production. If he has, if he go through a shooting slump like Jason Tatum. When that happens, you buy low. But is it going to happen this season? No idea. No idea if it is going to happen. Patrick Beverly, 21 minutes. The minutes is low. Fill up the statute. You can stream him. All those guys on the Clippers, other than Kawhi and Paul George, you can't stream. A lot of the guys you can't stream. Batum, Mibaka, Lou Will, they all bring something to the table in category leagues. Patrick Beverly, Marcus Morris, and Zubak. Zubak, you know, Zubak can give you rebounds and efficiency. On the Grizzly side, Dylan Brooks, you know, we know he's a low field goal guy. But the fact that he's averaging, you know, his ranking is bad. It's really bad. Right, I ranked 167 because he's shooting 40% from the field. If you don't care about the field goal, he, he may be a top 100 guy and can give you 16 points and 1.3. This is what I 
you know, it's being a really surprise so far. 1.3 steals. So, you, you know, if you don't care about the field goal, you hold on to him. Otherwise, maybe just let him go because the overall value he give you is pretty bad. Kyle Anderson, again, what? Five steals in a block? He's been, he, he has just been crazy this season. Where's Kyle Anderson? After this game, ranked 64th. Again, he's a sell high. JJJ is not back yet. Once JJ comes back, he's going to lose some minutes. And we know guys on this Grizzly team, their minutes is really inconsistent. So he might just play 20 minutes. Valen Tunis, Valen Tunis numbers. Grayson Allen, play 20 minutes. You can drop him if you were streaming him. John Moran, you know, the two steals is nice. But again, he's a sell high based on his name brand and draft position. If you can get a top 40 guy, I would do it. And all the guys on the bench, Anthony Melton played 24 minutes. P pretty good stat line. If he can get 30 minutes, 25 minutes every night, you want to roster him. But, uh, you know, most nights he's not giving you anything. But what a game from Kyle Anderson. Five steals in the block. Wow, great stuff. Let's go on to the next game. The Atlanta Hawks versus o Oklahoma City. Okay, so he got the win. Atlanta, what is going on? All right, John Collins, a great game, but him not playing at the center position, no blocks. He's a top 50 guy, can give you 18 points and uh, 9 rebounds, close 20 double-double, and good efficiency. Clint Capella went off, 21 rebounds, bad from the free throw line, 17 points and 4 blocks. Wow. Great, great stuff from Clint Capella. Trey Young struggled from the field again, and this is exactly the problem with Trey Young. He give you points, he give you assists, he is great from the free throw line, and nothing else. In this case, didn't even go to the free throw line once. If the other team is figuring out, like, hey, Trey, you're just drawing all those bullshit foul calls, his free throw is going to dip. And no defensive stats. And I worry because guys are still out on this team, although I don't think DeAndre Hunter is coming back anytime soon. But if Bogdanovich comes back, is Trey going to take 21 shots every single game? I don't know. Gallo went off and uh, struggled this game. He's a stream, stream guy. If you need those free throws, sure. And on the OKC side, Darius Basley had zero point and ten rebound game. Bounced back, right? This, this is what he can give you: eighteen points and twelve rebounds. And he has consistent role on this team. He does have upset if he can block some shots. And one for four from the free throw line is obviously bad. But hey, I would consider rushing him. See what happens. You know, occasionally he's gonna be. You know, he's just really up and down. But uh, he's got a, I don't know, maybe he'll figure it out this season. Maybe he never will. But, I mean, how many guys are you going to find on the waiver wire can play 30 minutes every single night and can give you great production? Uh, other guys like Garrett Temple, but he, he might lose value, right? Uh, another guy, Isaac Okoro is another guy. Patrick Williams, all those like young guys can, you know, get 30 minutes but not producing. Out of all those guys, I like Darius Basley the best. He's going to be up and down. We, we know that. Isaiah Roby started in place of uh, Al Horford. Didn't do anything. Streaming with Al Horford out. Dropping once Al Horford comes back. Lou Dort, you know, not giving you anything. Not interesting. And Theo Maladon. Wow. 13 points, a steal, and 12 assists. Really went off. After this game, go pick him up. See what happens. I think when George Hill comes back, he's still going to have value. Right? Shea, 35 minutes. Great game from Shea. You know, 24, 5, and 4 assists and a steal. If he can give us more defensive stats, he can be a top 30 guy. You know, the, the upside is there. Kendrick Williams played 25 minutes. If you want to, you know, I wouldn't really, I don't really want to stream him at this. You know, the minutes is really up and down. If he can get with everybody out, sure, he was getting 30, 35 minutes, and he can put up the stat. But every, with everybody back, it's time to move on from him. Let's go to the next game. Wow, a, a shootout. Uh, Charlotte Hornets losing to the Golden State Warriors. Gordon Hayward falling off quite a bit. 12 points, 2 steals, 9, 5 assists. Okay game for him. Well, Cody Martin started with all the injuries going on. He's worth taking a look if he can get 25. I know he's a pretty big steals guy and can give you assist. So that's that's upside right there. But I, I doubt he's going to get 25 minutes plus every single game. And Lamelo Boy is running the show at this point. 
Uh, PJ Washington, if he's out there on the waiver wire, you gotta grab him up. Um, Cody Zeller is hurt. Him playing at the center could help him block more shots. So I, I you know, I, I would roster him. He's he's got a pretty consistent role on this team. Terry Rozier again, insane efficiency and nothing else. He's like a Norman Powell. I mean, over the years, Terry Rozier was a sub 40% shooter. And for the season, he's shooting over 50, I mean, close to 50%, making three threes. Uh, but if the efficiency fall off, which I don't know if it's gonna come this season, but if it does, all the value goes out of the window because he's not a big assist guy. He only give you points and threes, right? And some, you know, I mean, good, really good efficiency. But everything else, he doesn't, he doesn't really bring them. Lamelo Ball, wow, good, yeah, great stuff on Lamelo. Five for eight on the free throw line, it sucks. You know he's gonna struggle efficiency wise, but the big rebound, big assists and steals, just good stuff from him. And Malik Monk went off again. I wouldn't trust it. Um, with everybody out, he's been getting 25 minutes, and he really just give you the points and nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. On the world, but if you need points and threes, and you're in a close matchup, you can stream him. Right, he can pop off, and he did here. On the Warriors side, let's talk about Draymond Green. Wow, twelve rebound, nineteen assists, a steal, and a block, and he even scored eleven points. This is a sell high moment for Draymond. I understand he's been playing. You know, people might think, oh, he's heating up. He's playing really, really well. Sure, that that's all possible. But they they played. Who did they play? They played the Charlotte Hornets. This game is a blowout. Right. Let me let me look at the Warriors schedule a little bit. Like who else did they play? Oh, they played the Pacers who's a you know, anytime they play a good defensive team, you know, Draymond is gonna is he's not gonna put this put up this level of stat. Most notably the nineteen assist. Uh Curry probably had it going on. Uh, Ken Uber actually had it going. He's not gonna, I mean, he's probably gonna average eight assists, seven, eight assists, 1.5 steals and some blocks. Those are valuable. Those are really, really valuable. But he's been on a hot streak. And uh, I would consider tr trading him for a, a top 50 guy or a top 60 guy. You know, find the owner that is pounding points and assists and ask, you know, be, be expensive. Just ask for a top 30 guy. Just try that. Because if you're pounding points and threes, Draymond is top 30 value for you, for sure. Uh, Andrew Wiggins d decent game once during the block. He's been consistent and still not hitting his free throws. If he can hit his free throw, he can be a top 80, 90 guy. Come on, Looney played 20 minutes, didn't do anything. And Kelly Ube Jr., wow. This is maybe also a sell high. Maybe not many guys in the league is willing to buy him because he's horrific, you know, such a bad start. Just completely went off 20. This is what he can do. Can score, hit threes, give you the defense and blocks. One still here. Great to see him, finally. You know. Putting it together. Curry, you know, 10 for 10, just great stuff on Curry. Not much to talk about. He's putting up the identical MVP season stats. But, you know, with everybody shooting threes, his value is not as great as he was back then. And let's move on to the last game of the night. The problem trouble is losing to the Lakers. You know, it's a one-man show. Damon Lillard played 42 minutes. I'm not too worried because he's an Iron Man. Um, Play 40 minutes, it should be fine. 35 minutes, 7 assists, no defensive stats. You know, 8 for 8 on the free line, good stuff. Gary Trent Jr., with everybody out, he takes consistent 17, 18 minutes, so you want to stream him for the volume, you know, three same points he provides. And he bought the two steals, that's always nice. Cantor, try to trade this guy. Nurkic comes back, he's going to lose majority of his value. But he's one of the biggest rebound guys with Nurkic out. He's a top 50, he can give you top 50 value. Because his rebounding, his high efficiency, and, you know, numbers, great free throw as a big guy. Yeah, but I would try to trade him. 17 rebound is way too high. And when, once everybody comes back, you know. Robert Covington, buy low. Try to buy low for him. I would trade Norman Powell for Robert Covington. Pretty comfortably. He's got a pretty safe role on this team. And if the shots start falling, if, that's an if, obviously. We, we don't know the future, but. He's not gonna be this bad all season shooting the ball. And he's already averaged 1.6 steals and almost a block. So those two categories, just really, really valuable in fantasy. Derrick Jones Jr., a two blocks, great stuff. A defensive streamer, 
If he played 35 minutes every single night, yeah, sure, you can consider rostering him as well. With everybody out on this Trail Blazers team. On the Lakers side, LeBron James finally put up a big line, four steals and three blocks. Maybe he thinks, hey, this Lakers team was struggling hard without AD. Let's uh, let's let's put on a, a good defensive effort. You know, probably only score 93 points. So good game for LeBron. Four for eight. We know he's a bad free throw shooter. Marquise Morris not interested. All the Laker guys. Dennis Schroeder came back. You know, looks great. You know, if you need points and assists, sure. But this Lakers is pretty boring to talk about. Montrezl Harrell played 30 minutes. <laughs> it's just a field goal, and nothing else. Because nobody is that, you know, nobody gets that big of opportunity on this on this Lakers team. Nobody's gonna get that many assists, and nobody's gonna, um, you know, come, you know, the guys that are playing high minutes, the upside is quite low. Like Dennis Smith Jr., like a KCP, Kyle Kuzma. I mean, you can stream Kyle Kuzma for some points and rebound, but you know, another bag in here. I'm not too interested. That's it for all the games. I'll see you guys tomorrow.